Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'd like to welcome you once again, dear viewers, to Discover Islam, Sharjah TV's English language Islamic chat show. Welcome back, an old friend, Umar Ahmed. And uh, Imran Khan from Canada. Welcome, alaykum. Alaykum. Welcome, salam. Now, Imran, you're the first uh, English speaking Qari I've ever met. Uh, and, you know, your story fascinates me as how you came. To, to learn Quran the way you have done. And uh, if you could fill us in a little bit about your background and your early life, etc. Sure. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulil ameen. Nabina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een. Amma ba'd. Basically, uh, I was born in the city of Hyderabad, India. And uh, I was moved with my parents to Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. I finished uh, my high school there. And after that, I went back to India to finish my grade 11th and 12th. Uh, and later on, we got our Canadian immigration, whereupon back in 1995, we went to Canada to pursue further education. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would definitely want to add uh, the point that while we were growing up in Saudi Arabia, uh, Alhamdulillah, since Just Jeddah... How many years was this, by the way, in Jeddah? Uh, I would say approximately 18 years. 18 wow. years? Oh, that's a good slice of your mm -hmm. life then, isn't it? Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. yes. And uh, Jeddah is close to the Haramain, in Mecca and mm -hmm. Medina. Mm -hmm. So whenever we got a chance to go there, we were always inspired by the different reciters and the different muadzin over there. Okay, yeah. So uh, every time just listening to them just made me feel that I want to recite like them. And uh, basically that's how I started to learn and slowly, slowly buying the different tapes, listening to the different tapes and getting in touch with different teachers from oh, right. different parts of the Muslim world and also Imam of Makkah, uh, Imam mm. uh, uh, Ali Abdullah bin Ali Jabir, Allah mm. yarhamu, who, who passed away last uh, uh, December or November of 2005. Yeah, okay, so you studied under him? Um, not completely, but I did get a chance to okay. uh, sit with him and mm. uh, recite few th uh, portions of the Quran and then I heard from him and got a chance to listen to him live rather than just uh, behind him in the Masjid al-Haram. Right. What, what age uh, was this when you were in Jeddah? Between what, what uh, uh, I would ages? say approximately uh, from age uh, 3 to almost age uh, 18. Wow. So you, you actually started learning Arabic as well in, in the school system or, or did you do that uh, outside? No, actually it was embedded in our uh, school system. Uh, back then it was called Indian Embassy School. Mm. Now it is called International uh, Indian School. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had three different languages. And we studied all the three different languages together. Mm -hmm. English, Allah. Arabic, Urdu together. Ex excellent, yeah. But uh, mind you that our curriculum was not as strong. But just because I had the interest with Quran, yes, yes. I pursued the Arabic language to understand Quran more yes, uh, yes. in depth. Right. and uh, I got more moved by the recitation and alhamdulillah once we got a chance to go to Canada mm. I met uh, there Dr. Jamal Badawi mm. yes. uh, whereupon I did get a chance to give a few talks and then present uh, whatever I learned from Saudi Arabia over there in Canada. Must have been a big shock for you yeah. arriving in freezing Canada from uh, yeah, the sunny yeah. desert. Exactly. <laughs> um, well, and the society as well is very different. Definitely, right? definitely. Um, it, it was definitely a big change, but uh, you know, with the mass multimedia and everything, you already happen to see what's going on around in the Western world and also in the uh, Gulf region. Mm. So for me, it wasn't a big change. I was already ready for it. And we went to a small town uh, called Halifax, which is northeast Nova Scotia. of Nova mm -hmm. Scotia. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And that's where Dr. Jamal Badawi uh, oh, lives. That's his hometown. Is exactly. It? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And then we decided to make that our hometown. Okay. And uh, Alhamdulillah, from there I started my da'wah work. I mention this, Imran, because over the years here in the Gulf, I've seen a lot of people, especially of Indian and Pakistan origin, go to Canada. And uh, a great many of them have come back regretting it, especially uh, losing their children or, you know, the, uh, the despiritualization mm. of their children in the high schools. Right. But you didn't experience that at all. No, Alhamdulillah. I mean, I actually went with a different mentality. Yeah. Uh, while I was growing up, uh, I was learning and I was a complete student. As soon as I touched down into Canada, yeah, you had I already. shifted my mode and said, rather than me getting influenced and impressed by other people, 
why don't I influence other people and impress other people and mm -hmm. inspire other people? And I think if we have that, then I don't think there is no force on the earth that can actually oh, right, uh, right. come in between your... Uh, yes, yeah, like once, you have, a, exactly. once you have a solid grounding, you know, in Islam, the Quran and Hadith... But unfortunately, not everybody is made of such stern stuff. Mm. <laughs> no, it's true. A lot of yeah. people, they, they um, go with the flow, as they call it. Mm. You know? True. Mm. true. What about your childhood in... Uh, oh, wow, yeah. I, I think I, I was uh, at polar odds to, to Imran. I actually grew up uh, without knowing Islam. Um, I grew up in England. Uh, and, and I didn't, I, I didn't have a starting, a base, a foundation of Islam and Quran. I, I sort of started the other way, um, completely away from the Quran. Uh, and then when I came here is when I started to, uh, you know, uh, research and look into Islam and, and gradually knew more and more about the deen uh, and put into place uh, in the implementation of the deen and stuff. Um, so I'd be surprised actually a lot of people, uh, uh, you know, born Muslims come back to the deen here and a lot of people convert also. Yeah. True. True. But what they lack is this thing that, that you have to offer. That's right. This learning, the proper recitation and mm. um, the proper... Understanding. Yeah, okay. you mm. know, having the proper mental hardware to approach the Quran. I mean, uh, what's your program in Canada now? Has it evolved or has it always been the same? Has it developed over the uh, years? Definitely it has evolved. Um, I would say um, when I went there in the first few months I was just researching and just trying to fit myself into the community. I was kind of sitting in the back row, if you will. And slowly, slowly, as I saw that, you know, over there everyone needs to get time off for a Jummah prayer. Mm. And it's just half an hour to 45 minutes. Yeah. And during that time frame, uh, you do want to hear something beautiful. Mm. And then you have any s person getting up and making a adhan mm. that literally shuts your mind off. Uh, I'm by no means trying to defame or... Mm. No, know. for me, I would say, Alhamdulillah, I've given almost uh, 15 to 20 different workshops on how to make beautiful adhan. Mm -hmm. I think Adhan is uh, something that you invite people to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the more beautiful it is, the more attractive it is to the, the audience. It's the first dawah. Exactly. And actually, yes, dawah. you find many people uh, that we've come across say that uh, just through the Adhan, that those were the first uh, baby steps that they took towards Islam was, was, was yeah. coming to an Islamic country True. and hearing the Adhan five times a day. You know? I heard the Adhan in Morocco yeah. and it sounded so, and you know, I never heard anything like it. Mm. True. Now I'll give you a few sample uh, adhan, inshallah. Uh, two different tones. One is the Egyptian style and the other one is the Arabian Peninsula style. Start with the uh, Arabian Peninsula, ma mainly from the Haramain, from Mecca and Medina. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Now the long form of Mecca. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Now we, we move to the Egyptian style, the short form. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Finally, the long form of Egyptian style. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allah. Just before boarding my flight to uh, Saudi Arabia, 
I was uh, waiting in the prayer hall of uh, Toronto's Pearson Airport's mm -hmm. uh, Terminal 1, mm -hmm. Musalla area, you know, the prayer mm -hmm. area. And uh, all of a sudden, one of the people from different faith, especially from Christian background, he came and asked me if he can recite some Bible to him. Mm -hmm. uh, like, if he can recite a few verses from the Bible. Mm -hmm. So we said, sure, why not? And he started reciting a few verses. In English? In English, mm -hmm. yes. And after he finished, he asked me, what do you think? I said, you know what, I don't even have to go anywhere to do that work. <laughs> the door has just been opened <laughs> for me. <laughs> and I said, uh, you know, I'll tell you what I think after you tell me what you think of me. Mm. He says, how's that? I said, just give me one minute. And I just recited to him a portion of Surah Al-Fatiha. And just the first part of Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, in a really nice and, uh, you know, mm. empowering way. And uh, as soon as uh, I started to recite Surah Al-Fatiha, he grabbed hold of my hand and he was a big man. And he started to squeeze my hand so hard that I felt as if he was going to break my bones. Oh, gosh. And then after I finished, I saw there were some tears in his oh, eyes. Oh my goodness, subhanAllah. And then he yeah. said that uh, I've never heard something so beautiful and I'm touched by the beauty of Islamic recitation. Oh, my goodness. Mm. Inshallah. Hey, the, that uh, verse in, in Surah Al-Baqarah, I don't know the Arabic, but mm. the translation means that the people of the book, they recognize the truth, mm. meaning Islam, as they recognize their own sons. Mm. You know, the good people amongst them. Yes, definitely. Yeah. definitely. Now, what I wanted to ask you is, do you have this uh, thing that all teachers find, that you have first, second, and third class pupils? Some people naturally have the ear and the voice and the aptitude, and some don't. Um, you know, um, I hesitate to actually answer that question, but I'll definitely answer that <laughs> question in a broader aspect. Okay. My mission actually is to the people who do not even fit in that category, oh. to the Ammatun Nas, to the general public, mm. to make the recitation of the Quran easy for everyone, regardless of their talent or no talent. So. Throughout my years, I've researched and developed a modern technique. For example, a person from Indo-Pak area, from Pakistan, India, mm -hmm. Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. uh, since in Urdu language, Ain and Qaf, Ha, all these letters tha. and mm -hmm. Tha yeah. are utilized in a lesser degree than uh, in the Arabic language. So we try to give them the workshop in such a way that after two hours, three hours, we show them how the throat is opened. Mm -hmm. You know, when a baby starts to walk, basically, the more the baby starts to use his limbs mm. and joints, the more easy it is to sure, get the stability. Sure. So the whole life, if a person is not using that part of the throat, then it's difficult. So once we show them that uh, light, they get really, you know, excited. And alhamdulillah, with the techniques, and I've developed some templates. For example, if a student comes to me and say, you know, I really like to recite like Sheikh Abdul Rahman Sudais, or I would love to recite like Sheikh Abdul Basit or mm -hmm. recite like any other reciter. That's a tall order though, isn't it? Because these are masters. Definitely. But uh, that's what uh, we have to do is to give them the best mm. in the most easiest and effective way. Okay. And uh, it revolves only around three things, Alif, Wow and Yeah. And uh, we just show them how it's uh, done in less than, I would say, five minutes. And after that, I ask the audience to just repeat after me, and then we slowly, slowly uh, take them to that level. Mm. And you, you've made some kind of a tape or some kind of a uh, CD of this uh, yes, program? Uh, yes, I have a, actually a CD called The Art of Recitation of the Qur'an. Uh, Alhamdulillah, almost about a few hundred copies have been sold in North America, both in America and Canada. But that CD is... Uh, mostly of uh, rules of tajweed and how to recite when to make ghunna and when not to make ghunna how long you have to stretch in terms of mad but i'm also coming up with another cd which will have the templates of different reciters so if any um, individual wants to learn sheikh abdul rahman uh, mm -hmm. recitation every reciter has something called as the common denominator mm -hmm. so that's how they base their recitation the basis of his style exactly mm -hmm. exactly and for that, I catch it, and I try to give them that, you know, for example, Abdurrahman Hudayfi, everywhere you find is Alif, Waw, and Ya, he keeps doing uh, e, ah. ooh. Now you just tell I anyone see. to just say that. By itself, it might not sound very good, but you say, okay, now put that into an ayah. Mm. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. And 
Mm. That's how it gets more beautiful yes, and beautiful. Mm. Embellished exactly. immediately. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. A and uh, these different styles of recitation, are, are they the uh, traditional uh, styles that the Prophet ﷺ would have you know, taught to the Sahaba at the time of revelation of the Qur'an? Are these, are these styles uh, uh, Sunnah styles? Or are, are they outside this just uh, normal ways of uh, of reciting. Okay, I appreciate the question. It's a very good question. Definitely, it comes under the Sunnah way of reciting uh -huh. the Quran because there are three modes of recitation. Mm -hmm. There is the slowest uh, form of recitation, mm -hmm. and then there is a medium form of recitation, and finally there is the fastest type of recitation. I'll try to give you the three sample uh, recitations, okay. starting from the slowest form, the medium form, and the fastest form. So, the first one, the slowest form. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله وتلك الأمثال نضربها للناس لعلهم يتفكرون. Now I'll give you the medium form of recitation. لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله وتلك الأمثال نضربها للناس لعلهم يتفكرون Finally, the fastest type of recitation بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله وتلك الأمثال نضربها للناس لعلهم يتفكرون so, so these were all uh, uh, um, I would say this propagated at the time of the Prophet yes, Sallallahu Alaihi definitely, definitely. so a person wow. can recite uh, in the slowest form wow, in two okay. different ways okay. okay one is in the way where we can find it more commonly in the Arabian Peninsula uh, okay. such as Dubai uh, Kuwait Saudi Arabia mm. Yemen and the other category is where you can find the area of Sham which is Syria Jordan mm. and Egypt Egypt yes, okay yes. so you have two different they often uh, have a very distinct styles, way exactly. of, uh, and both of them are definitely correct, correct. I, in terms of uh, uh, Sunnah. Sunnah. Yeah, exactly yeah. exactly because the teacher that I have if I keep going mm, uh, teacher after teacher, uh -huh. uh, after the 35th teacher, we go back to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that means that is called a Silsila Mutawatira Fi Qur'an Al-Quran Al-Kareem. Continuous chain of reciters back to the uh, all the way starting from Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Just a few minor uh, you know, deviations here and there in terms of the tones itself. Mm. But the essence of recitation rules are exactly the same. Mm, right. I mean, this is, subhanAllah, it's very interesting to, th to think about because uh, it, it makes it easy for people with different abilities to be able to recite the Qur'an. Exactly. I mean, this is the wisdom of Allah. This is the wisdom of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, because people like myself would probably find it extremely difficult to recite the Qur'an because, you know, uh, the, the age that I started uh, going into reading the Qur'an was very late. Uh, so I find it extremely difficult to to pronounce the words to use tajweed when I'm when I'm. Is reciting. there an age when you have to no. give up? No, no. Anybody, can. anyone can learn. It's never too late to learn. Anyone and everyone can start learning. Mm. In fact, if you take the best example, you have two uh, or three best examples in the Muslim world itself. They have the most uh, 
uh, famous uh, <laughs> personalities like uh, Yusuf Islam. Yes, yes. And uh, when he started, actually, he was uh, inspired by the Quran and he started to learn at such a level that. No, uh, no, and but he's got the musician's ear, hasn't he? You know. Uh, true. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, we have uh, Sheikh Hamza Yusuf. Uh, as well, and, yes. Um, he started quite. He late. comes from a different background as well. Yeah. You have Imam Siraj Wahaj and few other speakers as well. Mm. Uh, but it shows. But with, that the, with, with, the, with the other uh, Imams like Imam Siraj Wahaj, they they definitely have that uh, American twang still. In True. their pronunciation, uh, what I'm trying to say is, the more effort that you put into something, sure, uh, the more results you'll I mean, get out of. Uh, you know, I was reading some notes that you sent me. Basically, the old adage, "Practice makes perfect." Uh, I mean, think I think that rings true, especially with with the Quran as well. You Definitely. can't you can't say, "Listen, I, I can't recite." No, it's, it's basically it's it's a lack of your on your part of actually practicing. You know, I just remember a, a beautiful mm. hadith by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at this moment where. It says that uh, The person who recites the Quran and has difficulty and, and he struggles in and it, and he and has and double reward in it. So the question is, how many of us do actually go ahead and try it? Yeah. So we should not back down from saying that, okay, I've come to a certain age sure. limit, I don't have a beautiful voice. I'll give mm. an example. Mm. If someone says that I don't have a good voice, all they have to do is just learn the proper rule of tajweed. Mm. For example, inna atayna kal kawsar. Mm. The same thing if a person is taught that whenever you see a noon with a shadda, mm. just recite it with ghunna mm. uh, mm. and keep your voice in continuity and instead of just saying inna, say inna and that itself will start to get a beautiful shape. Mm. As time goes by, then that person will pick up a little bit of beautification from listening to any reciter. For example, instead of just saying inna, now he can say in so on and so forth. Right, right. Do, do you have uh, your programs have been taken up by any Quran schools in Canada? Uh, alhamdulillah, I have taught in uh, Isna school, Isna summer school, um, Islamic Society of North America. Mm. And uh, Alhamdulillah, I did give them a summer program. And Alhamdulillah, we taught them the different rules of uh, recitation. And uh, I did give uh, quite a number of lectures throughout the uh, area of Toronto and Halifax, a few cities in Canada. And Alhamdulillah, because of the uh, production of the CD, it did help a lot. Mm -hmm. There are many people, Alhamdulillah, who benefited. Is it available here? Uh, it is actually available here, but it will take some time to uh, get shipped mm -hmm. uh, from uh, Canada. Or if I can find uh, a company over here that can produce, then that will be great, inshallah. Mm -hmm. Now, I know one, one brother here that, uh, you know, with all the, the difficulties of producing books, he uh, translates books, uh, he, he's actually selling his books on the internet rather than mm. putting them into stores here. Okay. Well, it's, a bigger, it's a bigger market, and I'm sure a lot brother more Imran yeah. is doing that at present with your CDs, probably selling them on the internet. Um, on, uh, yeah, I think I should. You, you should, you should, exactly. definitely. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's mm. open uh, to a much wider audience and, and people in the, in the West. You local red tape. Uh, absolutely. Well. People yeah. in the West as well, you know, they're the people who uh, true. would really benefit the English-speaking uh, community. Yeah, tr true, uh, very true. Wh what about women in re reciting Quran? Is there any special rules for women? Uh, no special rules. Uh, they have to learn the proper recitation of the Quran equally as uh, men do. And as the ayah in the Quran in Surah Muzammil says very clearly, and recite the Quran in a slow and pleasant tone. It doesn't specify male or female, it just right. specifies a Muslim. And it's a fa'al amr, which is not a request or a question that can you recite or mm. please, if you get a chance, to try to recite. No, mm -hmm. it's an order, order. A direct command from Imperative, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. No. So, uh, mm. yes, go ahead. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Um, I, I just wanted to ask, uh, what is the importance of reciting the Quran in Tajweed? Can we not just recite the Quran a la tool like that? No, uh, actually, uh, that's how the Quran was revealed from Jibreel to Prophet Muhammad so, sorry. Sorry. And I, as I just quoted earlier mm. from Surah Muzammil, Ayah number 4, mm. specifies very clearly وَرَبْتِلِ الْقُرْآنَ تَرْتِلًا And recite the Qur'an in a slow and pleasant tone. Mm. And mind you, in another place in the Qur'an, in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes, الَّذِينَ آتَيْنَهُمُ الْكِتَابَ يَتْلُونَهُ حَقَّ تِلَاوَتِ 
uh, mm -hmm. those are people to whom the book was given and they recite the book the way it is supposed to be recited. Mm -hmm. There's a, a slight difference in the usage of the term, Arabic term, in Surat Muzammil, the word is Tartil. And in Baqarah, Tilawa. Tilawa, yes. So, Tilawa is an advanced stage of Tartil. That means, when a person is doing Tilawa, this person is doing Tartil, which means proper recitation with rules and also is understanding what is being recited. Mm. So that is an advanced stage. Mm, okay. And uh, that requires a little bit more effort on the part of the Muslim. Sure, sure. This is a problem uh, many non-Muslims uh, comment on that you have from Indonesia to Turkey so many Hafiz of Quran, mm. of course, and they, they don't understand. They re can recite from Fatiha to Nas. Uh, absolutely. And they don't really know what it means. Um, you know, uh, that part is definitely true, but at the same time, this also testifies to the uh, rest of the world that this is again a miracle from yes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah. you try to memorize any other book from A exactly. to Z, it's no one will be no. able to, you try to pick up any other book, yes. not in the face of <laughs> the earth, uh, no, no, no. any revelation that Allah has revealed, Torah, Zabur, Injil, yes. that uh, any person has memorized anything but except the Quran, no. and this responsibility mm is actually taken up by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not by ourselves. No, no. And Allah says, إِنَّا نَحْنُ نَزَّلْنَا الذِّكْرَ وَإِنَّا لَهُ لَحَافِظُونَ Verily did I reveal the Qur'an, and will I safeguard it. Yes. So this a response... And, and Allah says He's made it easy to recite as well. So subhanAllah, this, this is proof. All these people who, who can memorize the Qur'an, even though they don't understand it, this is proof of one of the miracles of the Qur'an exactly. itself from actually, Allah Actually, what I do uh, mention is, this is just step number one. Mm. which is, uh, it's uh -huh. like a manual, mm. okay, manual for life. You go to an electronic store and buy a new electronic equipment, mm. you get a manual with it. Sure. And we are an electronic equipment mm. created by our creator and cherisher and sustainer of the universe, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mm. who has given us a manual mm. plus a free walking, talking manual, which is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. لَقَدْ كَانَا فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا The best example that we can find. Mm -hmm. So that's a bonus that you don't find in Carrefour or you don't find that in Walmart or any other store. Mm -hmm. that's for sure. So, mm -hmm. and uh, this is not uh, warranty tied or guarantee tied. Mm -hmm. It is guarantee less and warranty less till the end of time. <laughs> exactly. And the most powerful thing that we have yeah. uh, in history is the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Did you ever come across any other religionist who claims to have memorized his book? No, I have never no. come across any. No. Alhamdulillah, I did participate in a few inter uh, faith uh, dialogues okay. and uh, really? uh, yeah, speeches. <laughs> um, but not to a very extensive level, but right, alhamdulillah, right. just on a very basic level. And uh, we did uh, start the a conversation where how Muslims uh, memorize, memorize the whole Quran. My, yeah. Yeah, so For example, the Hindus have this Bhagavad Gita, which is not that big actually. It's mm. not that long, and it's done in a kind of rhythmic verse uh, style, right. mm. shlokas. They exactly. Call it. exactly, and it's yeah. still. And it I've never heard of anyone memorizing. Memorizing exactly. No. Yeah. They do memorize uh, bits and pieces from here and there, yeah. uh, but uh, no one can claim, uh, unlike uh, Muslims, mm. that. Uh, they have memorized from A to Z or from Alif to Ya, basically. Mm -hmm. And I, as I mentioned, uh, mm -hmm. our Quran is such a powerful thing that the ayah that uh, is mentioned in uh, Surah Al-Hashr, لَوْ أَنزَلْنَا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ عَلَىٰ الْجَبَلِ اللَّ رَأَيْتَهُ خَاشِعًا مُتَصَدِّعًا مِنْ خَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ That if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had revealed this Quran on a mountain, He's giving the similitude of a mountain, Mount, yes. the mountain would have humbled itself to the ground. So this shows the magnificence and power, power of, the, of, the of the Quran itself. Absolutely. And in order for us to understand this power, we have to have these five basic things with us, which mm. is, after we do the recitation part, we have to go to the level where we have to start understanding. Because sure, absolutely. in addition to getting the benefits of recitation of the Qur'an, where uh, Prophet Muhammad has said in the part of the hadith where Ali he says that, لا أقول ألف لا ميم حرف ولكن أقول ألف حرف ولا من حرف وميم حرف and he says that, I do not say that Alif Lam Mim is one letter, but I say that Alif is one letter, Lam, Lam is, is one, one letter, and Mim is one letter, and each letter gets ten hasanat. Ten rewards, so the mere fact, ten rewards exactly. for reciting each letter of exactly. the Quran, subhanAllah, yeah. Mm. And just the mere fact you're reciting Alif Lam Mim gives you thirty rewards. So that's amazing. Mm. So we come to recitation of the Quran, mm. and then we go to the understanding of the Quran, mm -hmm. and after you understand, you have to implement, implement the teaching, of course. and finally then teach it, and that is what uh, our mission is. The best amongst you is the one yeah. who learns well, it, it and, and teaches, teaches it. it. No, no, you know? no. So, 
you should never get satisfied after the fact that you become a good doctor <laughs> or become a good engineer or a good salesman right. that you sit around but unfortunately dunya is such that everyone wants to do their own thing mm. but for quran and for islam it's unlike that so the mm. memorization is the first step then uh, recitation yeah. recitation uh, is the uh, first step i would say after mm. believing in the quran itself mm. because mm. there are five basic rights of the mm. quran mm. we had um, an englishman uh, He's a professor in uh, Leeds University, or was, last mm. time I saw him. As a boy, his father was a banker in Cairo. And uh, his, him and uh, the mother and father used to go out to these social evenings and leave him with the housemaid, you know, the Egyptian housemaid, who, you know, found him in the way. So she used to send him off to the mosque with her sons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> At the age of 11, he was a kafir who could recite <laughs> Jazama, you know, with pro well, good recitation. Oh, yeah. Allah. And, uh, you know, eventually, alhamdulillah, he accepted Islam. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Excellent. That's, mm. that's again a miracle from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Definitely. <laughs> How Allah wants to continue in the Quran yes, to the rest yes, of the yes, world, yes. inshallah. Mm. Slowly, slowly. What about translations now? I mean, if you're talking about an English translation, I find, I mean, it's my opinion, that th there's not one of them that's perfect. They all have some mm. disadvantages and advantages. Uh, what's your opinion on this? Uh, basically, uh, that is the exact point that I want to emphasize, that uh, it's always better to learn the proper Quranic Arabic and with the guidance of other translators that you have. Like, for example, Yusuf Ali is the most uh, mm. commonly used yeah, translation. Yeah. Uh, you can just take help with that. And once you're having an ayah in Arabic, and you know word for word, this will actually enhance your knowledge, and then you can keep referring back to the translation. I think Yusuf Ali, by far, I found is very fair uh, translated, uh, alhamdulillah. Mm. And uh, there's a very important factor that many people miss. Many people say, I've recited the Quran, not in Arabic, but they say they have read the translation. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. translation, yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But not the same. It's slightly it's different. Yes, it's, yes. It's, uh, actually, not slightly, but I would Quite say a lot. It's, it's, it's something it's, else. It's a completely different yeah. thing. Yeah. You don't have the exact same reward. It's not the Quran, actually. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. And <coughs> I'm saying uh, literally that every single day in five uh, daily prayers, uh, we ask Allah, إِهْدِنَا الصَّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمُ oh Allah, guide me to the straight path. And how can it be possible that so many times during our day we are asking Allah to guide us and He's not answering us? Mm. He definitely answers mm. us. And in such a way and in such a medium that you and I do not have that medium. And mm. that is the language of Qur'an. And two lectures in Fajr, two lectures in Maghrib and two lectures mm. in Isha. Mm. So if you ask exactly. someone, what did Allah tell me yesterday in Maghrib? Exactly. Yeah. What did Allah talk to me yesterday in Isha? Absolutely. It's very really hard. So it's important yeah. we maintain a journal. Mm. So yeah. it's really important how, because it's not random that the Imam has recited something. It has something to do with your life. For example, I was teaching in one of the schools, as I mentioned to you, mm. and I was a little bit upset with uh, teaching another class. And I came home and uh, told my family that, you know, I don't want to continue teaching. I just want to stay home and everything. Mm. So I was a little bit upset. upset yeah. And all of a sudden it was time for Maghrib prayer. And I happened to go to the masjid. And the Imam starts reciting, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. No soul shall bear the burden that they cannot bear, bear basically. Yeah. And <laughs> it struck me. I said, you know what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving me a message. Mm. And it's live communication. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you can understand the Quran, then it will definitely impact your life in a completely Absolutely, different yes. way. On a day-to-day -day ba basis. basis. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Your, your efforts in Canada are to start schools. I mean, what do you see as the future for this program? Um, what I do see is uh, to start not just in Canada, but in different parts of the uh, world, basically, mm, yes. uh, throughout the Muslim world, I would say, is to benefit each and every individual who wants to learn Quran in a short period of time, but in a proper way. Mm. It's like a person is pushing the wall all day long, and if a person walks by and says that you've been working very hard, he says, yeah, please don't talk to me, I'm very busy. Mm. He says, you know what, just go on the side of the wall and then maybe try to push it this way, it will fall. I just told you, I'm very mm. busy, don't talk to me. And the other example that you can take is, is a person is, you know, trying to chop the tree, and then his saw is not sharp enough. Mm. A passerby comes by and he says, you know, why don't you sharpen your saw? <laughs> So it's, it's unfortunate that uh, our methodology of teaching hasn't improved mm -hmm. or yes, yes. Uh, not enough research has been done. And that's exactly my uh, one cent.
uh, right, effort right. in this contribution mm -hmm. to the Muslim Ummah in teaching the people proper recitation in the most effective and fastest way mm. is to sharpen our saw and to present it in a more beautiful way, especially to the youth. My main aim mm. is to the I mean teenagers, to the youth, yeah. to the second generation. Alhamdulillah, our elders, mm. respected elder brothers and sisters have uh, got the, you know, uh, enthusiasm of mm -hmm. learning and spreading the Quran among themselves within their own circles. But if you sit in a masjid, if you scan the masjid, or if you sit in a halaqa or anything in the Jum'ah khutbah or anything, how many of that, uh, you know, population, mm -hmm. how many people do you find are actually majority of them are youth or teenagers? And that's what we have to focus on because of the mass multimedia. Many of them are indulged in music. Mm -hmm. And these days, there's a lot of, uh, you know, uproar about uh, shifting from the wrong music to the proper music called as the Islamic music. Mm. But unfortunately, people have stopped at the Islamic music. So that is just second level of nafs, because you have one nafs called nafsul al-mara bisu, where the soul doesn't recognize which is right or wrong. Mm. The second part is, okay, you know what is right and wrong, which is nafsul lawama. Mm. And after that, you come to nafsul mutma'inna, that the so complete satisfied soul and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that in the last part of uh, Surah Al-Fajr. Ya ayyatuhu nafsu al-mutma'inna. That, O oh, satisfied soul, return to me, you satisfied and you're, I'm satisfied with you. Mm. So, subhanAllah, uh, that's the state that we want to ac actually achieve. Mm. And that bridge is uh, myself, I would say. I'm trying my best to bridge the students. And I try to give them the music of the Qur'an. And once they listen to that level of uh, music of the Qur'an, uh, then I don't think they will be more interested in listening. Although um, there are differences of opinions between scholars about the authenticity of, you know, how far the Qur'an is, uh, I'm sorry, how far the music is, mm. yes, you know, yes, permissible. permissible and everything. But what we know for sure, which yeah. all scholars agree on, that most of the modern sex, drugs and rock and exactly. roll music exactly. is definitely not on. Because exactly. it's the exact opposite to the Qur'an. Exactly. Exact opposite. Mm. Exactly. But you the mentality I say that. take uh, with the students and teenagers is instead of telling them that you know just stop it yes exactly the same yeah, time as Medina that mm. Khamar was you know very There's widely a, spread yeah. among them mm. and then uh, it was asked that there is less benefit and there is, you know, mm. more harm for you. Step by so step. step by step. Yeah. And there's, there's a famous a hadith by, I think, Aisha radiallahu anha said something uh, on the lines of, if Allah had, had first told us, stop drinking, stop fornicating, and, and stop, you know, dealing in riba and stuff, the people would have said, no, I will never stop drinking, I will never stop. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started with, with uh, Tawheed. Uh, and when, hearts, exactly, yeah. and once the once the hearts were attracted to Allah, uh, Jannah and Jahannam, that's when rule started uh, entering. It's sure. e easier to accept. Them, sure, yeah. Yeah. sure. It is it is a big problem. And I, I teach in a university here. We have many nice, very good character uh, young people, teenagers, but they're seduced by this music. They're seduced by it, you know, mm -hmm. and they're. I don't know what's the cure for it. Uh, how do you deal with all this materialism and, and still attract people to the Quran? You, have, you try and give them a taste, is that it? Exactly. Mm. Just give them that uh, touch, mm. you know, that secret touch. Once they get that feeling of the Quran, then you do not want to turn your back from the Quran because the Quran mm. is such a magnificent thing mm. that once you let them enjoy, and exactly that's what I intend to do, we have a lecture approximately in any part of the Muslim community for approximately 40-45 minutes. And after the lecture is done, we ask within the audience to give a reciter of their choice mm. and then help them recite together. So everyone starts to recite together. Mm -hmm. And because of everyone reciting in a rhythm and collection mm. tone, everyone is inspired automatically. And after that is done, you try to reach out to the youth. And in fact, what I do sometimes if I see some youth, I say that respected elders, wait a minute. I would ask all the youth to come forward and then I ask them to read with me. So then they start to read slowly, slowly. And most of them, since they have a musical ear, it's easier for them to pronounce different uh, makharij and everything. And then you keep telling them and then encouraging them. The thing is, uh, if we want to say something that, you know, do not do this, do this, we need to have a better alternative. Mm. Yeah. And if we give them the proper alternative, mm. I think, uh, inshallah, it will definitely work. And it 
has to work because this is the Quran. Yeah. And uh, inshallah, the test of time. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. And that's uh, alhamdulillah. Uh, I would say without a doubt that uh, it has been successful for the last ten years that I've spent my life. Uh, mm -hmm. been invited by many uh, youth organizations mm -hmm. throughout North America to give uh, Quranic lectures and uh, Quranic workshops, uh, Tajweed workshop and uh, Qira'a workshop mm -hmm. specifically for students who want to learn specific style of recitation. Where, where would uh, people, the audience perhaps, uh, get a uh, first taste of Tajweed? Is, is there books on Tajweed that... Uh, are books useful? Uh, yeah. Because they're not or, or is it better to to go and, and listen to a, a reciter on the internet or on a tape or on a CD or something. Right. I mean, uh, Tajweed is one thing where... Uh, How would you learn Tajweed then if people are actually interested now in, rec in reciting the Quran properly? Excellent, mm -hmm. excellent. Uh, tajweed has to be learned uh, in coordination with the books, with the teacher. Mm -hmm. Without a teacher it's difficult because you can definitely yeah, open the you book, need, you can uh, go through chapter 1, sure. chapter 2, chapter 3, but you wouldn't know whether you're you know, the pronouncing sound the right, yeah. sound or not. Mm. Mm -hmm. So if you have the teacher, and that is called the uh, proper talaqi, proper pronunciation, and that's how Prophet Muhammad mm -hmm. gave to mm. the Sahaba. Mm. So, so I mean, I mean, how do you do this yourself? I mean, uh, you, you can't. Well, I suppose you could travel around everywhere, but it's it's going to be very hard if people want to learn from you and you're traveling around everywhere. You need to be stationed in one place, uh, surely, yes, or have staff, or it? have people, staff of people, exactly, who mm -hmm. uh, you know. No, for uh, for that purpose, what mm -hmm. what you do is is uh, I'd or, say or have CDs or have CDs, CDs and MP3s yeah. running on the internet. Definitely, uh, that yeah. that is actually again it is complementary to the main mm -hmm. objective, mm -hmm. which is what my task is to arouse an interest of Qur'an in them. Mm -hmm. Once that interest is aroused, once the engine is started, they will do the rest of the work. They will go and find a teacher in their own city. Mm. Okay. F f any teacher is found very easily these days in America, well, Canada, yeah, UK, yeah. any part of the Muslim world. Rarely do you find a place where you cannot find a proper Tajweed teacher. Mm. Once a person has finished the basic recitation, now if he wants to go further, then he can definitely, you know, mm. pursue his career in uh, University of Azhar in Cairo, mm. or come to Makkah mm. University, uh, like uh, Umm al-Qura University, or any other places. Like, for example, I happened to meet a doctor in Halifax itself, mm. who was a urologist by profession, and he was a professional reciter by profession. A neurologist, or urologist? Urologist. Urologist, mm. yeah. yes. Okay. And uh, we happened to meet him, he was there for his training, and he became my teacher, and then, alhamdulillah, I took it. And uh, I did get uh, my certification called as the verbal certification, mm -hmm. since I'm not a complete memorizer of the Quran. Mm -hmm. So he gave me a verbal uh, certification called as uh, Ijazah Shafawi. Mm -hmm. And he gave me the permission to go and teach other people. Okay. And uh, as I said, that the silsila, the continuous chain of reciters, go all the way back. Mm -hmm. And then that's how you inspire other people to go and learn from authentic people so that they can get that authenticity. Mm. Well, um, that's all we got time for, brothers, inshallah. We, uh, thank you very much. It's been very inspiring to hear this, and uh, I know personally it has given me some impetus to sure. dust off my books and get, you know, yeah. get back into it again. Inshallah. Thank you also, dear viewers, for watching. We hope, inshallah, you'll join us the same time next week from Imran Khan, from Umar, and myself, Uthman Barry. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.